Hello everyone, my name is Mohammed from KSG Learning and I'm excited to meet you today. I'm currently teaching GCSC and A-level science at KSG Learning. Now let's learn some chemistry. As we can see here, we have each of the topics broken down into the subtopics, down into the individual concepts that you need to understand for you to maximize the marks that you get in the exam. At the end, I'll be giving you a test to ensure that you've understood them. Let's learn about subatomic particles. So if we just break down, so if we just break down what subatomic particles are, sub means smaller than, and atomic is talking about the atom. So here we're just talking about things that are smaller than atoms. Okay. Now we know that an atom should be the smallest unit of uh, molecules, uh, but in fact we can even deep dive smaller. And as we can see here, what we have is we have a nucleus in the middle, and this nucleus contains protons and neutrons. And then we have orbiting it, sort of like the moon does to the Earth, electrons. And here we can see that there we have electrons. Okay, now what are the properties of these subatomic particles? Well, here there are two key features that we should keep in mind. Firstly, we need to be discussing their size, or their mass rather. So the mass of a proton is about equivalent as the size of a neutron. It's important to note that these aren't mass in grams or they don't really have units, we're just talking about their size relative to each other. Electrons are so small, we can get away with saying that they are size zero in the exam because they, their size is negligible. Now what about their charge? So protons are plus one. How can we tell this? Well actually there's a pro in the word, so that tells you it's, it's plus one. Then we have neutrons which are zero. Is there a way we can find that out? Well here we have neutral, which sounds like we're talking about neutral, and therefore the charge is going to be zero. And as the only one left over, electrons are going to be minus one. They're going to be negative. It's important that we have each of these um, causing the, the properties of the atom to change. So let's deep dive a bit further on how the atom works. So firstly, when we say an atom, by definition, it has to be uncharged. Okay. Now, if you remember, we said the proton is positive and an electron is negative and a neutron has a charge of zero. Therefore, in order for atoms to be uncharged, they need to have as much positive as they have negative. And therefore, the number of protons needs to be equal to the number of electrons. Since on the periodic table, we can see the number of protons below the atom, such as, for example, if we have carbon, it's going to say 6 on the bottom, 12 on the top where 6 represents the number of protons. Then, as a result, we can tell that the number of electrons must also be equal to 6, as they have to equal each other. Finally, we talk about where neutrons come in. Since neutrons have a mass and protons have a mass, they're the only ones that are going to determine the overall mass of an atom. Since electrons are so small, it doesn't really matter how many you have in determining the mass of an atom. So at the top here, we can see there is the overall mass number. Since we already know that the mass of proton is one, and there are six of them, that means that protons are contributing six in the overall mass of uh, the carbon. And therefore, what we could do is we could subtract 6 to find out how much the neutrons are contributing. So we do 12 minus 6, which is going to be equal to 6. Okay, so what equations could we use to ensure that we, we can always get these right? 
Well, all you need to remember is that the protons equal to the electrons. And that the mass number minus the proton number is going to be equal to your number of neutrons. So let's go over a question that they might ask you about this in the exam. They might give you a lithium atom, and they might ask you how many protons, neutrons, and electrons there are. I'd like you to pause for a minute just to think about how you would uh, answer this question. Okay. So, we can see here that the proton number is 3, and therefore, there must be 3 protons. We can also see that because it's an atom, there must also be 3 electrons. And finally, 7, which is the mass number, minus 3, which is the proton number, gives us 4 neutrons. See, chemistry doesn't need to be complicated. This is but one example of how we can use a systematic method to ensure that we understand all the concepts needed to secure the highest grade we can in the exam.